Good evening and welcome to our Wednesday evening live webinar themed Gardening for the Soul. And this evening my heart is guided to read To Bless the Space Between Us by the late John O'Donoghue as a reflection. But first, let us be still. You may have had a busy day like I have working in the garden. And what a lovely day it's been too. So let us just make this time special for us and just unwind and reawaken your heart to the I am presence of God within your being. For you are a child of love, a child of the divine. So just focus on your breathing and just be still. And as you place your feet on the sacred earth, allow your being to connect with the energies below the soil, below the growing grass. For there is life there, and that life is of God. And just make yourself comfortable and sense the peace and the rhythm of your breathing. And with each in-breath that you take, allow yourself breathe in the very essence of life. To begin, I'm just going to read a one-off reflection from Sister Stan, Gardening the Soul. She says, To be ourselves is the most wonderful thing we can be in the world. To realize the capacity we have to be ourselves is the work of a lifetime. It is the one thing we can do superbly well and that nobody else can do. Dad, isn't it amazing that I exist? A small child to our father. To be ourselves is the most wonderful thing that we can be in the world. Beautiful words. And yet, when you go down the high street in a busy city centre like London or Manchester or New York or Philadelphia, you see a lot of long faces, troubled faces, So now, this is your time to smile. Because you are in the presence of God. The presence of a loving Father, Mother God, who created you out of love to be happy. So as you sit back and relax, allow me share with you these beautiful words from the late John O'Donoghue. He says, there is a quiet light that shines in every heart. It draws no attention to itself, though it is always secretly there. It is what illuminates our minds to see beauty, our desire to seek possibility and our hearts to love life. Without this subtle quickening, our days would be empty and wearisome, and no horizon would ever awaken 
our longing. Our passion for life is quietly sustained from somewhere, somewhere deep within us that is wedded to the energy and excitement of life. This shy inner light is what enables us to recognize and receive our very presence here as a blessing. We enter this world as strangers who all at once become heirs to a harvest of memory, spirit, and dream that has long preceded us and will now enfold, nourish, and sustain us. The gift of the world is our first blessing. The gift of this world is indeed our full blessing. Just reflect on those few words. It would be infinitely lonely to live in a world without blessing it. And the word blessing evokes a sense of warmth and protection. It suggests that no life is alone or unreachable. Each life is clothed in raiment of spirit that secretly links it in everything else. Though suffering and chaos befall us, they can never quench that inner light of providence. While our culture is all gloss and pace on the outside, within it too often haunted the lost. The commercial edge of so-called progress has cut away a huge region of human tissue and webbing that held us in communion with one another. We have fallen out of belonging and consequently, when we stand before crucial thresholds in our lives, we have no rituals to protect encourage and guide us as we cross into the unknown. For such crossings we need to find new words. What is nearest to the heart is often farthest from the word. So let us just remind ourselves of what the late John O'Donoghue has said. He says, and the sentence that really strikes a chord with me, there is a quiet light that shines in every heart. What does that mean for you? What is this quiet light? For some, the quiet light is their God, Buddha, Vishnu, Ganesh, Krishna. Or it may be their material possessions. It may be that inner security that their love life is all well. But for those of us who have surrendered our heart to God, that quiet light is living it is vibrant. It asks nothing for itself. For everything is a joy. Come back to your heart. Your heart is your teacher. It is the gateway to your soul, your higher self. And your higher self is the gateway to nirvana, to God.
Are you sensing that inner light? And if not, why not? For that inner light is freely offered. It is a free gift, but it's only given to those who have the courage to ask. Because when you and I were created by God, we were given the most precious gift of all, the gift of free will, the messengers of God, the angelic realm, were not given this gift, but you and I were offered this gift to choose whether you wish to stay stuck in the mire of painful memories and unforgiveness or to choose a different life a life where your inner light shines brightly, where your inner light, that is the love of God, touches hearts through human kindness and even a smile. And the choice is yours to make. You can say yes and surrender your heart to love, or you can do what many do, walk away. But here's the nugget. The God who created you, though you may turn your back on God, God will still love you. Now that might sound utter nonsense, but it's true. And how do I know it's true? Is because only last week we celebrated one of the most beautiful Christian festivals where many Christians reenacted the, the story of Golgotha where the Christ, the Son of God, gave his tomorrow for our today. Where the Father, Mother, God allowed their sole begotten son to be browbeaten, pulverized, to have his flesh torn from his body, to be nailed to a cross, and to suffer an ignominious death out of love. Come with me now. Come and sit with me in the monastery garden. Let us have some me time, as they say today. And in this garden, there is love, there is joy, and there is an abundance of peace. So come. You choose where you would like to sit with me. Maybe under the cherry tree, or maybe by the fountain, listening to the water cascading down, or the fish swimming under one of the waterfalls. Or maybe just sit in a quiet corner. Let us relax now. And let us allow our senses reignite that flame, that deep passion that we have for God, where we can come to that place, where we can ask God to come in and to touch us, to touch the very fiber of our being and to allow us experience the healing touch of divine love because Christ is here he is waiting to touch you he wants to set you free so that you can enjoy life and live your life to the full let 
ancestry lands. Let us kick off our shoes or sandals, high heels if you're wearing them, but not desirable, especially on a grassy surface. And just get yourself nice and comfortable. And as you relax, allow your senses be blessed by God. For your senses will see the magnificence of God. Your eyes will see the beauty of God in all of creation around you. Your ears will hear the praises of God from the animal kingdom. And in your heart, you will know deep, deep down that you are loved. So relax, and as you breathe in, you're inviting the presence of God into your life. And in your out breath, you are saying, come, Lord Jesus, come, beloved Mother Earth, come, beloved messengers of God, Come, Spirit of God, fall afresh on me. You may wish to call your own God. You may be a Buddhist, a Hindu, a Sikh, or whatever. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you're asking your source for life so that your heart can be reawakened to who you are as a child of love. Now experience that love. It's coming to you in the gentle breeze from the angels of the air realm. And the angels of the water realm through the sound of running water in the pond is cleansing your mind, your body and spirit of all negativity, all fear, all anxiety. And the angel of the earth realm is allowing you receive the healing energies from within the cathedral of God, the landscape, from the trees, the lungs of the universe. And the angel of the Father, Mother, God is now standing before you and approaches you. Are you ready? Are you ready to come into your inner sanctum and embrace your God. And before you stands the Lord Christ, our brother Jesus, the incarnate Son of God, a great teacher, and he beckons you to share, to aflow, But more importantly, he asks you to receive. Maybe you've struggled with receiving praise from others when they thank you for your generosity. Maybe there's a deep sense of unworthiness embedded in you from childhood, as there was with me for many years. But he's inviting you now to say, yes, Lord. Here I am, here I am, here I am. And there is a silence and you feel his love 
flowing from his heart through his hands as he places them on the top of your head, your crown chakra. He's bringing you back into full alignment with your highest power. He's releasing into every fiber of your being, every muscle, every tissue, every organ, an appreciation that you are loved, that you are a child of the Most High God. And he's inviting you now to take your power back from all that negativity and from those who have wronged you or may play games with your mind, he's now inviting you to receive the gift of healing love. Are you willing to allow Christ into your shadows? Are you willing to allow your heart be transformed by selfless love? Reflect now. Reflect that the Christ who loves you, who died for you, is standing before you. And he's doing this out of love, not out of duty, out of love. And with each in-breath now that you breathe in, there is a reawakening within your heart. You are now hearing that inner voice of spirit allowing you to receive God's love and this love is setting you free. Relax, relax, and know that you have always been loved. And no matter what you do with your life, no matter what choices you make, be they advantageous, be they, dis, be they to your wrongdoing, be they to your own downfall, you will always be loved. Because you are a child of love a child of God. And we come back to read what we read at the beginning from Sister Stan. To be ourselves is the most wonderful thing we can be in this world. To realize the capacity we have to be ourselves is the work of a lifetime. It is the one thing we each can do superbly well and that nobody else can do. And a small child to her father says, Dad, isn't it amazing that I exist? Isn't it amazing that you and I were called to this table and reflect on other ways of gardening for the soul. Well, let us now receive the Lord's blessing. As we bow our heads, we give thanks to Father, Mother, God for speaking to our heart, for calling us back and inviting us to retreat from the mind, 
that set so many traps before us and to rekindle God's love and to work from love. To work from love is not to acknowledge fear because fear as you know is an illusion and yes it destroys lives it leaves so many crippled where they're afraid to even come into the presence of God where they feel a deep innate unworthiness but do you feel that? Or do you feel free and like the little girl? For you and I can say it now to our Father, Mother, God. Thank God we exist and that we are a beloved of God, a child of God. And as the Christ leaves us, he doesn't say goodbye. He says, I shall see thee again. And you gently come round and have a little walk round the garden. You take your time to take in the many colors, the scents and fragrances and to have time alone where there is no spoken word. And as you walk across the sacred grass, you're aware that Mother Earth has touched you. And as you go towards the main gate, you open that gate and you depart a different person than when you first came. It's as if you're that little girl skipping down the village road saying, Dad, isn't it great to exist? Thank you for joining me. I look forward to your company again. And in the words of the great Francis of Assisi, may God reward you. Have a blessed sleep. And you can say what my granny taught me to say as a little boy from the age of four, where she repeated it every night. And we repeated it after her. And she used to say this. We will sleep the sleep of the just. J-U-S-T. Namaste, Shalom, Inshallah, Paxet Bonum, Om Shanti, Solo di Caritas, Salam Alaikum, and may the peace of your God Goddess reawaken your heart to who you truly are, a beloved of God. Take care.